Thanks everybody for joining us. We'll, we'll get started today. Today's presentation um, is titled Pharmacy Outreach Community Program Overview. Uh, today's presenter is Victoria Howard, case manager here in the state of Massachusetts. We very much appreciate your participation today. Um, we're going to go through the presentation and at the very end, we'll have the opportunity for questions to be answered. Um, this is a webinar, so there's no interaction between um, those that are participating and the presenter. So if you have any questions, please put those in the question and answer button at the very bottom of your Zoom. Victoria, could you move to the next slide, please? So my name is Bill Pat Jane. I'm the executive director for the American Parkinson Disease Association. The Mass Chapter is uh, here based in the Boston area, and we'd like to welcome you to today's presentation. The APD. The APDA of Massachusetts has been in operation for decades and offers programs and services to the PD community in Massachusetts and surrounding states. We have received a large response for the, today's presentation. Uh, there has been a tremendous amount of progress in understanding and treating Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is highly individualized from person to person. Not all that is discussed today is relevant to everyone. The healthcare team must be familiar with the signs and symptoms, treatment strategies, and how PD impacts the individual patient. Treating Parkinson's disease requires a team approach. Today, we are providing information, and this information is not intended as medical advice. I'd like to introduce today's presenter. Today's presenter and the title of today's uh, subject is Pharmacy Outreach Community Program Overview. Today's presenter is Victoria Howard, who is a case manager for the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Today's presenter will discuss the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, uh, Sciences Pharmacy Outreach Program and the various services they offer to help make sure that you're able to follow your me medication schedules. So this is a very specific program here in Massachusetts. Um, it's called the Pharmacy Outreach Program. Victoria Howard works in the state of Massachusetts, and many of her examples that she will cover today will be locally applicable. Check with your local state resources for more specific information. So without further ado, I'd like to transition to Victoria for today's presentation. Hi, Bill. Thank you very much for having me today. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you everyone for joining on this beautiful fall day. Um, today, we're going to talk about, first of all, I wanna make sure that you all are familiar with the Pharmacy Outreach Program. I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do and how we help folks. I'm going to give you an outline of some of the things that you need to know. Some of the things you need to know about your cost of your medication, how to access medication, the questions to ask. Understand what affects cost and coverage. And we're going to do a brief review of some of the programs that help with medication cost. So a little bit about the Pharmacy Outreach Program. We are a free information and referral service um, for Massachusetts residents. Um, we were missing from this slide. We were established in 2001. Um, I think that's an important point. Some folks may know us as Mass Medline. That was our original name. We had a very long name. Mass Medline, the Pharmacy Outreach Program at Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Very, very long name. So it was decided a few years in that we were going to 
um, drop it to just the pharmacy outreach program. In addition to our funding sources, we work collaboratively, collab collaboratively and in partnership with Shine and Prescription Advantage here in Massachusetts. What we do to help folks, we answer questions and concerns about medications and diseases. We provide one-on-one -on -one medication reviews. We have pharmacists on staff for this information. We evaluate insurance plans, including Medicare Part D. We provide education at community outreach events and we research ways to save on the cost of medication. Some of the things that you need to know, and forgive me, I know this may seem obvious, but what happens, and I think this happens to many of us, especially when we don't feel well, or we are overwhelmed when we our face with sticker shock. We go to the pharmacy to pick up our prescription and we find out it is significantly more than what we were expecting. So kind of thinking about some of these things I think is helpful. I can't tell you the number of people that call in and, and are so overwhelmed, may not even know the name of their medication. They just know their doctor sent in a new prescription and they can't afford it. So, Let's talk about first to know the specific name of the medication and dosage form. One of my favorites is, it's that little pink round one. Well, that does not unfortunately narrow it down. <laughs> we need a little bit more to go by. Another piece of information that's extremely helpful, especially if you wanna know if you can obtain your medication for less money than what the pharmacy is telling you it's going to cost, What's the full retail cost of the medication? That's a great question to ask at the pharmacy. If I didn't have insurance, what would it cost me? Our little cartoon here says, your prescription is $30, the pharmacist is telling the customer. However, there's a $75 copay. Seems ridiculous, but I can tell you, this does happen. And that's why simply asking that question, what's the full retail cost of the medication? That is a good question to ask. And I'll get into a little bit about how and why that happens in another slide. How much is the co-payment or the co-insurance? So co-payments are flat rates. Co-insurance are a percentage. Does the insurance plan have a drug deductible? So in January, at the beginning of the year, I'll have folks call and say, oh, my medicine, they told me at the pharmacy was going to be, you know, $600. Well, is that $600 at the beginning of the year because you have to meet a deductible? And then it's a copayment after that. Another good question to ask. Has that deductible been satisfied? So how much are you gonna pay for it after the deductible has been satisfied? Sometimes sticker shock comes with the quantity that a prescription is written for. Sometimes folks don't realize that that $90 price at the pharmacy might be because it's for a 90 day supply. Another good question to ask. Understand your pharmacy options. What's the difference between a retail network pharmacy, a retail preferred network pharmacy, mail order and specialty pharmacy? And boy, oh boy, can you get into a lot of trouble if you go sometimes outside of your network. You may find yourself responsible for full cost. So these are some important facts that you kind of want to start with. Briefly, I want to touch upon Understanding insurance types. Know your insurance. There's a difference. Some assistance programs that we're gonna talk about a little later on, employer-sponsored commercial insurance, 
some of those assistance programs only are available to someone with an employer-sponsored plan. Some are only available to folks with Medicare. So it's very important that when you are reaching out and asking for assistance, asking for information, you need to know about your own insurance. There is no one central database to look up what someone's insurance is. I say this from my experience in working in a retail pharmacy where people will come in without their insurance card and think, well, can't you just look it up? Possibly if you filled your prescriptions at that pharmacy before and your insurance hasn't changed since the last time you filled a prescription. And I know to many of us, this may seem obvious. And again, it happens when we're upset, when we don't feel well, when we're overwhelmed. And again, when we see sticker shock, the price of that medication. So although this may be obvious, it's important to try to remember. These are some of the things that affect cost and coverage for medications. You want to know to start off with, is that medication even covered by your insurance plan? There are things called prior authorization, there's quantity limits, and there's step therapy. Prior authorization is usually attached to those very expensive medications. Quantity limits. Again, when there's a concern about the type of the medication, whether or not someone's going to take too much, the insurance is not going to allow for more than a certain day's supply. Step therapy. Step therapy, the insurance wants to know that you have tried and failed on usually a lower cost alternative drug before approving that more expensive drug. Diagnosis is important. If your doctor is prescribing a medication for something that's not already an FDA approved use, chances are your insurance isn't going to cover it if there's a prior authorization requirement. And that's the same with an off-label. That's pretty much what it, an off-label use. If the doctor is prescribing something for an off-label use, it won't be covered. This is the same for trying to find assistance for the cost of a drug. If it's not for an FDA approved use, if it's for an off-label use, you won't find coverage or assistance. Medication availability. Is this simply a medication that's available as a prescription? Or is it one of those that's available as both a prescription and over-the-counter? What will happen is after a medication becomes available over-the-counter, the insurance companies start to realize this and don't want to cover it. And they say, no, nope, you can buy it without a prescription over-the-counter. We're not going to cover it anymore. You may find that the copay will go up. Maybe it will be covered in your insurance, but you'll be paying more for it. Some of the common medications this happens to are the things like Prilosec or Nexium. Those are perfect examples of that. Pain patches, another good example of that. Lidocaine pain patches, we've seen that. Whether or not a medication is available as a brand, a generic, or an authorized generic. What's an authorized generic, you ask? just another layer of complication for all of this. An authorized generic is usually manufactured by the manufacturer who originally made the brand name and is an authorized generic by that company. I'm gonna talk briefly about some of the resources that are available to help folks with medication cost. And a little graphic here with the different color and size sneakers that says one size does not fit all is very important to keep in mind. 
there's plenty of different types of assistance and discounts and programs. One size does not fit all. And that's what makes it a little more complicated. Prescription Advantage is the program in Massachusetts. They call it an SPAP, S-P-A-P -P for short. It's the state-sponsored pharmaceutical assistance program in Massachusetts. Its primary function, although it does offer other types of assistance, its primary function these days is to provide help in the gap or the donut hole you may be familiar with if you're a Medicare beneficiary. It's a secondary benefit for Medicare Part D. Although it does provide some primary drug coverage for other folks, that's very limited. For those where it helps with the gap, folks usually pay no more than seven to $18, seven for generic, 18 for brand, or 12, for generic and 30 for brand. Those copays are based on income. Another great benefit for prescription advantage members is it does provide a one time special enrollment opportunity. What that means is with Medicare Part D drug coverage, open enrollment time is an annual event and you can't change your plan outside of open enrollment. However, Prescription Advantage members do receive one opportunity each calendar year to change their prescription drug plan if necessary. I can tell you this is a very nice benefit and I've had some, helped several folks who have just decided to apply for Prescription Advantage simply to be able to change their drug plan. It is important to know it is income-based. However, they do not count assets. And below in the table, you'll see the guidelines. The folks in the higher income bracket do pay $200 to join. I do also want to mention, it's important for folks to know that applying for Prescription Advantage and most other types of programs that help with the cost of medication do take time to get signed up for. So I would like to encourage anyone that is thinking about Prescription Advantage that's listening today, that may be for me or that may be for someone you know, please reach out, whether it's to us at Pharmacy Outreach or Prescription Advantage, reach out as soon as possible because it can take time to get signed up. Medicare savings programs. The Medicare savings programs, also known as the Mass Health Buy-in Program. This reduces Medicare premiums, deductibles, and co-payments. And missing from this slide, it should say that it works as a secondary benefit to Medicare beneficiaries to their Part D. It provides something called full extra help. And what that means is it reduces your prescription drug copayments to $3.70 for generic drugs and $9.20 for brand name drugs. It does also provide those special enrollment opportunities that we talked about that Prescription Advantage members get, that opportunity to change your plan, your Medicare drug plan outside of the open enrollment window. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the Manufacturers Patient Assistance Programs. This is free drugs. Everybody wants to know, how do I get free drugs? 
This is where the program started back in 2001. When the grant was designed for our program, they thought we could help everyone apply to the manufacturers to get free medication. I have to tell you, certainly free is nice if you can get it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of hoops to jump through to get it, and it does not work out very well. This has limited income guidelines, it requires income documentation to be submitted. It's nice if you can get it. It does not solve the problem of how to afford a medication. Um, it's short-term solution only. It typically lasts about a year. Uh, they do say you can reapply after that and it does not qualify as insurance. Copay foundations. Copay foundations help folks with medication um, for specific diagnoses. These are charitable organizations that help pay for prescription copayments. They do provide some additional assistance, but for the purpose of today's presentation, I am going to limit the discussion to prescription copayments. So in order to apply for this, in order to be eligible for a copayment foundation, you must have insurance and the prescription drug that you're looking for help with must be already covered by your insurance. So it's typically for the co-insurance, for the specialty drugs that run in the hundreds and sometimes thousands. The nice thing about the copayment foundations is the income guidelines are pretty generous. They go, some go up as high as 500% of the federal poverty guidelines. They typically ask only about income. They don't ask about assets. Grants are typically awarded on an annual basis. They will tell you about how and when you can reapply. And foundation grants may not be available on the day that you inquire because they depend on donations. One day they may not have funds and the next day they do. There are many of them out there that provide different types of assistance. For more information, again, you wanna reach out to Pharmacy Outreach for more information. GoodRx. GoodRx has been pretty popular. Folks want to know about prescription drug coupons. There was some confusion at the beginning when these became available. Yes, Medicare beneficiaries can use GoodRx coupons. However, as the second bullet point indicates, it cannot be combined with insurance. It cannot be combined with insurance of any kind. It does not discount a copayment. However, it is your choice. If you would prefer to use a coupon, that's your choice. However, I would recommend before opting to use a coupon, know your facts as we talked about on, the, on an earlier slide. Compare the prices. GoodRx is good for medications that maybe are not covered on your insurance or they have so many restrictions that maybe those limitations are pushing you to look for other options. Maybe you need a higher quantity than your insurance is willing to pay. Compare generic drug prices. Compare your copayment to the cost with the coupon. These are accepted as most pharmacies most you'll find most pricing you'll find on their website. It's very user friendly and easy to use. You can print or save the coupons on your smartphone or simply ask at your pharmacy counter. They're pretty familiar with these and most pharmacies should be glad to help you.
Walmart Pharmacy. Walmart Pharmacy, I have highlighted in this slide as a program under special generic pricing. Many of the big box stores offer special generic pricing programs, not just Walmart. I highlight Walmart because they do have some of the best options. However, look around your local grocery chains all offer most, I should not say all, most, Wegmans, Osco at Shaw's grocery stores, Stop and Shop, Hannaford's, Price Shopper and Market 32, all offer special generic pricing programs. It's typically only on generic drugs. However, you'll see that Walmart does offer insulin at some very good prices. Before you think about going there, remember, compare the cost with your insurance. And also know your insurance has one price based on your day's supply for your insulin. Walmart is going to charge you based on quantity. This may not always be a better option. Keep that in mind. Copay cards. Copay cards are only available for folks with employer-sponsored health insurance. It reduces copayments. It's offered by pharmaceutical companies for brand name medication, typically on newer medications. It does have a maximum that they are willing to give, a maximum that they are willing to discount. You must read the fine print. Unfortunately, Medicare and Medicaid beneficiaries are not eligible to use these cards. These cards can be found at your doctor's office or pharmacies. I'd like to just remind folks, some of these things that I talked about today, the GoodRx, Walmart, special generic pricing, this is just a small sampling of some of the options that are available. There are so many other things that you could consider for help in reducing the cost of your medication. Some of these solutions may be complicated, but what I'd like you to know today and what I'd like you to remember, there is help out there. Pharmacy Outreach is here to help you. Please contact us for further assistance. Our toll-free number to reach the program is 866-633-1617. Or you can submit a question online. If you follow the link to our website, you can submit that right online to us. Our hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Here are some of the resources. And with that, I thank you. Good, thank you so much, Victoria. That was great presentation and some wonderful information. So we've got a couple of uh, questions that I'd like to present to you to answer for the group. Uh, the first question that I have is, if my insurance will not cover a new medication, is it worth checking again in the future? That's a great question and thank you for asking. So if your insurance will not cover a medication, your, you or your doctor can submit a formulary exception request. And that is petitioning them to cover a drug that's not on their list of covered drugs. Yes, it's absolutely worth it to check again. Good, thank you. Next question I have for you is, why am I required to get prior authorization on some of my medications that are in the generic form? When insurance requires a prior authorization there and it's a lower cost drug, 
there's concern about whether or not that medication is appropriate for everyone. So insurance wants to make sure that it's clinically appropriate for you. And that's why your doctor must submit a prior authorization. That's great, thank you. Um, next question is, when we call your program, who will we be speaking with? Great question. When you call in, you will typically reach our administrative assistant, our intake person, or one of our students. And their role is to take some general information from you first. They're going to ask you a series of questions. They're going to ask you for basic demographics. They're going to ask you about the medication you're inquiring about, as well as your insurer first. Those are some of the questions we need to know to try and help you. So That's what will great. happen is the administrative assistant, our intake person, our student will gather that information and then your case will be referred to one of us, whether it be myself as one of the case managers or one of the pharmacists, and then we follow up with you from there. Whether you choose to have, do that by phone call or email, we can even provide a one-on-one -on -one Zoom presentation with you that's available as well, simply just ask. We do provide virtual, virtual communications. That's great, thank you so much. So uh, an, an additional question is, where do I find out about the Parkinson Disease Pharma Manufacturers Patient Assistance Program? Would it be calling your center? Yes, please do give us a call at Pharmacy Outreach and we'll be happy to help you with that. Um, additionally, another question, is it true that there is legislation to cap out um, the out-of-pocket copay costs? There is, and we do have some limited information available about that. And again, please do put your request in by calling the program. So I have, uh, oh, so I, first of all, I'd love to thank you very much for today's presentation. If you could move to the next slide. I think uh, we've gone through all the questions today. So thank you so much. I want to additionally say that APDA uh, here in Massachusetts, as well as many other states, has a financial support program that you can apply for that will provide you with some financial assistance to help pay for things such as medications. And so if you'd like more information, please reach out to the Information and Referral Center at uh, BU Medical Campus, 617-638-8466. They can help you with referrals and resources. I additionally wanna just uh, say a few things about what we do here in the state of Massachusetts. There are many chapters across the US. So if you're not in Massachusetts, reach out to your local chapter. Here in Massachusetts, we do education and support. We've got support groups. We've got symposiums and educational events. Many of those educational events are virtual. Uh, health and wellness programs. We have exercise and movement classes, dance, yoga, tai chi, boxing, and more. Uh, we also have a fitness professional training program. And here in the Boston area and available uh, nationally, we have the APDA National Rehabilitation Resource Center that is also available to those across the entire US. So if you have questions about um, exercise or rehabilitation, reach out to them. That's a, also a toll free number. They provide support and education. Thank you. Next slide, please. Want to also just speak a little bit about um, the APDA across the country as well as here in Massachusetts. Um, most of the chapters across the US have websites. 
Here in Massachusetts, our website is apdama.org. We also operate uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So you can find information about all of our programs and services that way. So if you have uh, any need for information or any interest in connecting, please connect via, you know, either calling the Information Referral Center or connecting with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We very much appreciate today's presentation. Thank you so much, Victoria Howard, for a great presentation today uh, regarding the Pharmacy Outreach Community Program Overview. Thank you also to the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, Sciences uh, the Pharmacy Outreach Program. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Uh, we'll also be sending this recording out um, to all of those that have registered. It will be up on our YouTube page. Again, I wanna thank everybody for participating today and thank you, Victoria Howard, for doing a great job with the presentation. Have a great day, everybody.